Sunday evening, Wave 105, there's Joe Jackson and Stepping Out, and it's time for five things you need to know about next week. And to talk us through it, it's columnist and blogger Vicky Charles. Hello, Vicky. Good evening. What have you got for us this week? What's the first thing we need to know about the it? The first thing, on Tuesday, the Kaiser Chiefs are playing at the Bic. I've never seen the Kaiser Chiefs live, but I hear good things. I know, I've never seen them either, but I don't really go to many gigs these days. <laughs> Apparently they're very good. And Ricky Wilson's a bit of an all-rounder, isn't he? Little bit, yeah. He's not just Ricky Wilson from The Voice and Ricky Wilson from Kaiser Chiefs and never mind the Buzzcocks and all the rest of it. He was in St Trinian's 2 um, and he was in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. I haven't seen Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 but I shall look for him you when eventually... It. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I ran out of Harry Potter after the third one and I oh haven't seen goodness. any more since. I've got a DVD box set of them somewhere but I need to catch oh up. Oh my goodness. You, you have gone down in my estimation not seeing Harry Potter. I think <laughs> I'll wait until my kids are old enough to appreciate it before we then do the whole lot. I guess, yeah, it is a weekend job, that. So what's the second thing we need to know about next week? Glow in the park on Southampton Common. Basically, run around the park with a torch. That sounds quite cool. <laughs> yeah, you can either do 5k or 10k, which is two laps. I mean, we were just saying last week about all the great races we've got going on in the South. This one, you know, you're not going to get a PB, you're not going to be winning any, you know, breaking any records. But I think it's just a good giggle, really, to go and run around the park in the dark. It's the ultimate event for the self-conscious runner. It is. Nobody can see you wobbling. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So that's on uh, Wednesday. That's the glow in the park. What's the third thing we need to know about next week? We've got the bodyguard at the Mayflower. A lot of people are looking forward to this. They are, yeah. It's the f they've, they're coming here first after they closed at the Adelphi last year. This is their first port of call for the tour. It sounds amazing. Who's in it? Alexandra Burke, who proves that she's not just one of Simon Cowell's kind of pop star people. She's had rave reviews in the West End when she took over. Um, she's not doing the matinee performances. They're do being done by Zoe Burkett. So they've got two singers playing the one role and presumably it's because it's such a big part. More wobbling for them perhaps for one person. Yeah, I, I, well, I definitely couldn't do it, but I think it's a big job, isn't it? And the soundtrack was so huge. It was massive. It is still the best-selling soundtrack album of all time and it's, what, 24, 20... No, 23, 24 years old now? Yeah. Older than my sister. <laughs> it's how you judge things. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So it's at the Mayflower from Thursday all the way up until the end of the month. Yeah, until the 28th. Fun fact, uh, Whitney Houston, she obviously originally... Um, was in control of the soundtrack for the movie. She picked the songs and wrote a lot of the songs as well. Um, originally, she was going to have What Becomes of the Broken Hearted as the main song for the movie instead of covering Dolly Parton's I Will Always Love You. Can you imagine that? I don't think it would have been quite as big. I, don't, I can't imagine her sitting in a suit in the snow singing that old song. <laughs> So, the fourth thing we need to know about next week, the one unavoidable thing Ugh. about next week... I am not impressed with this one. Fifty Shades of Grey is opening in cinemas on Friday. The best-selling book comes to the big screen. Oh, well, I don't, know whether, I don't know enough about it to know whether they've covered all three books or just the one book and there's going to be a sequel. So I detect a little bit of disdain in your voice. Why? But to put it bluntly, it's badly written Twilight fanfic. <laughs> OK. <laughs> it's honest, but blunt. I have read part of the first book. I gave up. It was just, Besides the fact that I think it glorifies the type of relationship we shouldn't all be kind of lusting after, it's badly written. But it depends on how you view the story, because I'm told you can view it as an abusive relationship, etc., etc., or it's the fact that sh this girl has come along and actually taken him from that and turned him into something else. If it was... Um, a man that she didn't find attractive turning up at her house, you know, finding where she lives without her knowing, <laughs> things like that, and saying, you're coming with me. If she didn't find him attractive and he wasn't rich, probably it would be a book about stalking, wouldn't it? That's an interesting perspective. Thank you for sharing it. <laughs> What's the fifth and final thing we need to know about next week? Well, Saturday's Valentine's Day. Really? Which means get your wallet out, buy some red roses... <laughs> Go and sit in a crowded restaurant with loads of other people. Get your wallet out, surely take a second mortgage. <laughs> yes, exactly. Go and sit in a crowded restaurant with a special menu that's been put on that's twice as much mm -hmm. as what, you, what you'd usually have in that restaurant, mm -hmm. surrounded by other people who are feeling desperately pressured to have a good time yes. and show how romantic they are. The expectation is on. It's got to be the perfect evening. <laughs> and woe betide you if this isn't exactly what my expectation of it is supposed to be. Yes. On the other hand, <laughs> if you feel like you might want to do something a little bit less mundane for Valentine's Day, um, the number six cinema at Portsmouth Dockyard is showing Casablanca. One of the most romantic movies of all 
time. I have never seen it. Oh, it's amazing. I am tempted to go along as Billy No Mates on my own and go and watch it. Well, actually, that could happen because it's only got 275 seats. So if oh, everyone else is... One. Then you can be that odd one. I'm going. And the venue, I love the old Boathouse Cinema. Built in 1846 and it's got the biggest screen on the south coast. We're so lucky in the south. We've got the largest cinema screen in the south at the, the old Boathouse. We've also got that tiniest cinema in the Westbourne Arcade. Oh, the teeny tiny one, yes. The one that was showing the carry-on films. Yes. So there we go. Five things you need to know about next week. If you require further information on any of them, they're on Vicky's blog, which is... Singlemotherahoy.com And we'll stick a link to that on our Facebook page. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Thank you. This is the new track from Years and Years. It's called King on Wave 105.